an actor from his time, Eli Wallach was known for his many roles on stage and screen. He could play all kinds of characters from the bad guy to the funny one, which made him stand out. His acting was so real and deep that people still remember him today. Whether it was in the good, the bad, and the ugly or on Broadway, his work left a mark on the entertainment world that's hard to forget. Do you have any special memories of watching him in movies or shows? Share them below. And don't go away because we've got more interesting facts about Eli Wallach's career. Keep watching this video for more insights into his amazing journey. Eli Wallach, a well-known actor, made significant contributions to cinema with his outstanding performances. For those new to his work, exploring his films gives insight into his talent. Among the must-watch movies is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, where he plays the memorable character Tuco. In The Magnificent Seven, he stands out as Calvara, a notable antagonist. Another great performance is in The Misfits, alongside Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable. For those diving deeper, Baby Doll showcases his early acting skills. In How the West Was Won, he delivers a compelling performance in a grand western saga. The Godfather Part 3 also features him in a supporting role, adding depth to the famous series. Overall, Wallach's filmography offers a variety of roles, each displaying his undeniable talent and versatility. Whether it's his portrayal of different characters or his ability to command the screen, his movies continue to engage audiences. Father to son Peter Wallach and daughters Catherine Wallach and Roberta Wallach, his personal life included a notable family. He rarely consumed alcohol, which posed a challenge during the filming of The Misfits, where he sought guidance on portraying drunkenness authentically. In his role as Ben Baker in McKenna's Gold, he shared the screen with Julie Newmar and Burgess Meredith both known for their villain roles in the 1966 Batman television series. Additionally, Ted Cassidy reprised his Lurch character from the Addams Family in The Penguin's Nest, while Robert Phillips appeared as the Penguin's cellmate in Batman Fine Feathered Finks. This convergence of actors from different series adds a layer to his diverse career, showcasing his adaptability across various roles and genres. Turn down a role in From Here to Eternity that won Frank Sinatra an Oscar. He missed out on a significant opportunity by declining the part. He has appeared in three films recognized by the Library of Congress as culturally significant The Magnificent Seven, How the West Was Won, and Girlfriends. In The Magnificent Seven, he portrayed Calvra. During filming, he found it challenging to stifle his amusement in a scene where Yo Brenner's character clashed with Steve McQueen's. Brenner was displeased with McQueen's actions, refusing to draw his gun in the same scene with him. Despite turning down notable roles, Eli Wallach left his mark on cinema with his performances in culturally significant films. In his younger days, Eli Wallach had a slight gap in his teeth, but he later closed it. His role as Silva Vaccaro in Baby Doll stirred controversy, particularly due to a seduction scene with Carol Baker. Many speculated about his character reaching under Baby Doll's dress during a swinging chair scene, but both actors clarified that the positioning was due to cold weather and heaters on set. Wallach also appeared alongside Telly Savalas and other friends on television shows like Kojak, showcasing his versatility in acting. Savalas' circle of friends included actors like George Savalas, Tyg Andrews, Bruce Kirby, Jackie Cooper, Michael Constantine, Vincent Gardenia, Daniel J. Travanti, Bernie Copel, Shelley Winters, and Danny Thomas. Through his diverse roles and collaborations, he left a lasting impression on the entertainment industry. In The Godfather Part Room 3, Eli Wallach played Don Altobolo. Interestingly, the aunt of Mary Corleone in the movie is portrayed by Sofia Coppola's real-life aunt, Talia Shire. Standing just behind Eli Wallach at the party scene is Talia Shire's mother, Natalia Coppola, who looks a lot like Sofia. In The Magnificent Seven, Wallach played Calvra. Surprisingly, his role got higher billing than Steve McQueen, who was listed third. Horse Buckles' credit was moved to the end to highlight him as a new star. Also, James Coburn was credited seventh after Brad Dexter among the seven. Eli Wallach didn't like guns, which added depth to his roles, especially in westerns like The Magnificent Seven. Despite billing changes and family connections in The Godfather Part Room and Three, Wallach's performances left a strong impression on audiences. After struggling with the New York teacher's exam, he faced a big decision about his future. Luckily, he got a scholarship to the neighborhood playhouse, which changed everything for him. He spent two important years there, learning and making friends with other actors like Gregory Peck, Lorne Green, and Tony Randall. Throughout his career, he had health problems, including two hip surgeries and back arthritis. But he never gave up on acting. 
Even when he faced danger during filming for the good, the bad, and the ugly, he prioritized safety over perfection. He bravely said, I won't do that again, when asked to redo a risky scene. His life story shows how strong and dedicated he was to acting. He made a big impact on the acting world, inspiring many people along the way. It's a story that sticks with you and continues to motivate aspiring actors today. Time Magazine once likened Eli Wallach and his wife Ann Jackson to the proletarian Luntz, referencing the legendary theater duo. He gained fame for playing the lead bandit Calvary in The Magnificent Seven, bringing a captivating villainous presence to the screen. Despite being older than most of the cast, he outlived six of his fellow stars, showing his lasting energy. Only Robert Vaughn, who died in 2016, lived longer among the main actors. In an interesting interview on Fresh Air, Wallach told Terry Gross about the surprising origins of his horseback riding skills. He developed them during his time at the University of Texas, where he cared for polo ponies. This early experience proved valuable during the filming of The Magnificent Seven, where he and the other actors spent many hours on horseback, adding authenticity to their performances as rugged bandits on the frontier. Wallach's dedication to acting and his willingness to fully immerse himself in roles earned him praise from audiences and critics alike. His impact as a talented actor continues to inspire performers today. This reflection on his life and career reminds us of the lasting impression he made on entertainment. Indeed, his work in film and theater will always be remembered and celebrated. While attending the University of Texas, he acted in many student plays. In one, he performed with fellow students Ann Sheridan and Walter Cronkite. According to his autobiography, he was a Brooklyn City youth who went to a farm during the summer. When asked if he could ride a horse, he had been riding for many years and would do his own stunts. As Silva Vicaro in Baby Doll, in the scene where Silva finds his cotton gin burned down, he found it difficult to relate to the situation because he didn't care about cotton gins being burned down. Instead, he imagined that a friend had burned down his house with his wife and children inside and so gave Silva the right reaction of rage and fury that the film needed. In his role as Guido Delini in The Misfits, Eli Wallach faced a challenge during a drunk scene at an unfinished desert house. Director John Huston gave him a straightforward piece of advice, a drunk doesn't act drunk, a drunk tries to act sober. Wallach took this advice seriously, resulting in a perfect depiction of the character. In 1983, he looked back on his experience working on the film. He mentioned his initial prominence in the cast, thanks to Marilyn Monroe, who had requested him specifically. However, as big names like Clark Gable, Montgomery Clift, and Thelma Ritter joined, his billing diminished. He had formed a close friendship with Monroe years before, sharing memories of her frequent visits backstage during his performances at the actor's studio. The filming of The Misfits coincided with the unraveling of Monroe's marriage to Arthur Miller, and he observed the challenges faced by Gable and Clift, noting their shared self-destructive temperament. A curious mention comes from the February 6, 1985 issue of Variety, announcing the film Amber Solpont, slated to start filming in March 1985. The film, directed by Ruggiero Diodato and starring Franco Nero, Patrick Wayne, Lisa Blount, and Wallach was anticipated, but there is no evidence to suggest it was ever made or released. In summary, his experiences on the set of The Misfits reveal not only his dedication to his craft, but also the complexities of working with well-known figures like Monroe, Gable, and Clift. The obscure mention of Shadow on the Bridge adds a layer of interest to his filmography, raising questions about projects that may never come to fruition.